So we had just finished talking about measured numbers and significant figures and how they were important to us in chemistry that we keep track of where our degree of uncertainty is and that's what we use sig figs for. Mm -hmm. uh, also in chemistry we do a lot of calculations. So let's now talk about significant figures in calculations and how we cut off our numbers to uh, keep track of where that degree of uncertainty is. So basically we're looking at sig figs in calculations. And that's section 1.6. First off, before we get to the rules of sig figs in our calculations, we want to talk about rounding. We are going to be cutting off our numbers, so we want to round off appropriately. And in order to do that, we're going to look at the number to the right. There's nothing new or special about these rounding rules, just some of you may not know the explicit rules. We want to make sure we're all on the same page. Basically, if we look to the right and if that number is 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, okay, we aren't going to round the number that we're cutting off at. So do not round. If that number is 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, we want to round up. So if we look at an example, we want to rewrite the following numbers to three significant figures. Go ahead and pause the video, try these out on your own, and then your solution will be here when you get back. All right, so our first number we have 1.854. We want to round to three sig figs, so we start counting. We have one, two, three sig figs. So we're gonna look to the right of our five to see if we need to round it up. It's a four, so we don't want to round the five up. So that number to three sig figs would be 1.85. For our next number, again, counting our sig figs, we have the one, the eight, and the four are the three sig figs that we're interested in. <clears throat> we look to the right, that's a two, so we don't round up, and we have 184. Third number, a little bit tricky. Remember that we want to start counting our sig figs at the first non-zero digit. The zeros out in front are not significant, so the four is our first sig fig. Seven is our second. The three is our third. We look to the right of the three. That's an eight, so we do need to round up. So we report this number as 0.00475. The fourth number, this is another tricky one. We have an 8, an 8, and the 0. Now we don't round that 0 up because there's a 0 next door. 
but we have to somehow write this number so that this zero is significant and the second zero is not. Okay. Now we can't do that by just placing a decimal on the end because that will then make all four digits significant. We also can't just put a decimal at the end of the first zero because then we've changed the value of that number. If we put the decimal here, then we're saying we have 880 versus what we have to start with of 8,800. So the only way to write this number expressed to three significant figures is to write it in scientific notation. So again, we can't write this as 8800 because that has four sig figs. We also can't write this as 880 with a decimal point because this is a different number. So we use a, a red pen, cross those out, those are wrong. So again, rounding rules, nothing new, standard rules apply. Uh, just want to make sure we are all on the same page as to what those rules are. So I've kind of ended my, my topic of rounding, so I'm going to draw a line across my paper. And now want to talk about our sig figs and our calculations. So we have two different rules that we need to follow. Uh, the rules for cutting off numbers with multiplication and division are different from those with uh, addition and subtraction. So let's start first with the addition subtraction rules. For these, we want to express our final answer to the lowest number of decimals that were used. So I'm going to box that in my obnoxious hot pink color. If we look at an example of this for where, where this comes into play, if we want to say we're taking two measurements of a volume and the first measurement we have 89.332, uh, we'll say it's in milliliters, and our second one is 1.1 milliliters, okay, coming from two different measuring devices, so we have two different degrees of accuracy. For this first number, okay, our degree of uncertainty is in the two here, okay? whereas in the second value, it's the ones in the tenths place where that degree of uncertainty is. If we were to plug this into our calculator, our calculator would give us 90.432 milliliters. Now, hopefully we were able to do that in our heads, but I won't judge. So if this is our value that the calculator gives us, we have to look at not just the calculator answer, but we want to look at it in terms of scientific reasoning. Okay, We want to know where does that degree of uncertainty lie. Okay. So we want to go to the lowest number of decimals. The second value here has just the tenths place. The first one has the thousands place. So our degree of uncertainty actually starts in this four. Okay. And remember when we write numbers scientifically, not in scientific notation, but uh, appropriate scientific numbers, we only want one uncertain digit. Okay. So we would cut this number off at the tenths place 
So we would say that this is 90.4 milliliters. Now to illustrate that we have the degree of uncertainty starts in that tense place, if we say had someone else do these same measurements, okay, uh, perhaps say the first one they get 89.334 um, milliliters, that's what they feel that measurement was. And let's say they think the second one is 1 1.4 milliliters. Okay. That way we should say we're adding these. Okay. Now, scientifically, these are appropriate. They are the same measurement. Okay. Remember, we can allow for some degree of changing in these the last digit. Again, our calculator issued value, we have 90.734 milliliters. And if we compare this value to the first one that we have, we are certain in the first two digits. We know that this is at least 90 milliliters. But our degree of uncertainty, our, our numbers change with that first decimal point. So that's where the degree of uncertainty lies. So again, that's where we want to cut our number off to the tenths place. So we have 90.7 milliliters. Okay. Now mathematically, these are two different numbers. Obviously, there's a 4 there and there's a 7 there. However, scientifically, these are the same values. Okay, we can allow for some variance in these last digits. So as long as it's the last digit that are varying from each other, we consider those the same measurement. All right, so those are our rules for uh, addition and subtraction. Subtraction works the same exact way. You cut off your number to the lowest number of decimals. Okay. Our rules change when we look at multiplication and division. For multiplication and division, we want to express the final answer to the lowest number of sig figs. All right, so if we look at an example, if we take 4.51 and let's multiply it by, well, let's do uh, 3.678. Seems like a good number. Okay. If we were to plug this into our calculator, let me grab my calculator here. We have 4.51 times 3.678. My calculator is giving me 16.58. What is that? 778. This is what my calculator gives me. Now, calculators can do math. They are great at that. They are very logical, but they are not intelligent. A, a calculator does not know uh, what sig figs are unless you have one of the very fancy calculators, and I wouldn't trust those because uh, some sig fig rules can change depending on when and where you cut off sig figs, so be aware of that. Um, instead, we can just use our own brains in order to make sure that we write down this number scientifically versus mathematically. Okay? So we want to go to the lowest number of sig figs. So we look to our first number. 
This has three sig figs. Okay, the four, the five, and the one. Our second number has four sig figs. So we have the three, six, seven, eight. So our lowest number of sig figs comes from our first number. So we want to round off our answer to three significant figures. So we have the one, the six, and the five. And again, don't forget to round appropriately. We have an eight next to the five, so we need to round that five up. So our final scientific answer would be 16.6. So this first number here, I refer to it kind of two different ways. I'll either call this the calculator answer or this one could, we can call the mathematical answer. And our second value here, our 16.6. Uh, this would be our scientific answer. So that wraps up our sig figs and calculations. Feel free to work on your questions and problems in section 1.6 of your book, as well as there are some questions uh, to help and, and hints and whatnot on the sapling learning site.